okay guys, so this is the bits that we've got uh, laid out in front of us for the first part of this build. Um, I have jumped ahead ever so slightly, um, purely and simply, because this is the most simple build I have ever, ever done. Um, the, the Drone Frames DRQ250 um, is the easiest frame I've ever built. Uh, it's very, very clever, and uh, all the bits go together really nicely. No modification needed. So, um, this is uh, the bottom of the clean plate. Uh, this this copter does have a clean, dirty plate design, and we'll run through that as we uh, start the build. So, um, you have six bolts that go into these standoffs, um, spacers, if you like. So, bolt those in. It doesn't matter whether you have it this way up or that way up with any of these parts, um, with the exception of the top plate, so otherwise your drone frames logo will be upside down. But everything else is symmetrical. So it really doesn't matter whether you get it the wrong way round. Um, actually, I'm telling a porky, um, this is the back uh, of this part. Um, but it doesn't matter whether you get it upside down or not, as long as you get it round the right way. So, first off, put your six poles in to this um, bottom of the top plate, bottom of the uh, clean plate. And then what I've done... I'm going to be using my Mobius um, for my FPV camera, so I didn't want too many cameras on here. Um, I am going to be putting a 3D camera on this at some point, um, but for that there is like a little extension plate that goes on the front. The Mobius will be coming out and the 3D camera will be going in there. But for this one, I've simply taken two zip ties and put them through the Mobius carrier. And with those zipped down in that position, it really does hold the Mobius very securely on there. And it also holds it over to one side so that the camera is in the centre as much as possible. Because uh, when you're threading a needle with a little 250, you want the camera to be in the centre as much as possible. So, um, there, there it is. That's the, the bottom plate. Uh, the next for the next part here is the top of the dirty plate and I've installed the uh, the clean plate isolation uh, mounts and this is what soaks up the vibration between everything on the dirty plate and your top clean plate now because I'm using a stripped down cube rain in my build, I'll just grab this, it's off to one side. I've done some of the preparation work already because I'm using the cube brain with all the casing stripped off. It won't quite fit in the recess that was designed for 12 ampere C's. It has to sit on the top. And because of that, I've had to use four of the nuts on top of the isolation mounts just to give me a little bit more clearance because what you don't want is anything from the dirty plate touching the top plate that's very important otherwise you're just going to transfer all that vibration across so the the first step really uh, is to grab your two little center pieces now if you were building uh, a standard version, there, there are um, a couple of copper plates which go in here which you use for your power distribution but because everything's all in one, in one unit on the Q-Brain I've negated the use of that which hopefully will save me some weight so you simply put those two pieces in and then you take uh, your top plate, drop that on we're going to put these two centre bolts through first 
and I'll come back uh, for the next part when I've done this. Uh, now take one of your arms, there's two holes in these arms which match up nicely. Now I'm just putting one bolt through these, uh, through the, the outer hole. And then popping a nut on the bottom, I am recommending that you use some thread locker um, or a little bit of CA or something if you haven't got a thread locker on these screws because there will be, no matter how well balanced this is, you will be getting a lot of vibration. So I'm recommending that you guys put a little bit of thread locker on these just to make sure that you don't have these come loose in a flight. Now, with these pinched up tight enough, that isn't moving. So you may, if, if you're gonna use it as a folder, like I am, you may wanna leave those, the second screws out. But if you think, hey, it's not, you know, it's not really that big anyway, even with all the arms out, then you could put the second bolt through. I like this as it makes it nice and compact for moving about. And if I have an accident, the arm's going to fold back. So I'm going to put the other arms on and get the lock tight, and I'll see you there. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, the next step in the frame part of the build is to drop the dot top deck on. But we're going to fit our cube brain uh, underneath and we want to put a battery strap in at this point so I'm going to pop this back off um, but I just sort of show you while we're at this stage uh, let's move it where you can probably see it a little bit better there um, what's a great idea is there is actually three different mounting positions for the clean plate so you can have a center position a rear or a forward position to help you fine tune your center of gravity which I thought was a nice idea. So enough of me rambling on about that. I'm gonna put this to one side. I'm gonna get the Velcro through the bottom here. I'm gonna introduce the cube brain and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix it down. Okay guys, so I just thought I'd show you the uh, the bottom of the, the uh, DRQ250 quickly. Um, I've... Uh, Literally, just taken a little piece of the 3M Velcro, because this is the best stuff. Although the stuff from Hobby King is very good, it's blue, and I didn't really want blue on the copter. Um, all this piece of Velcro is intended for is to stop this slipping forwards and sideways and backwards. That's all that's for. We are actually going to have a battery strap around that. So, a little patch in the middle of your battery. This is a three cell zippy compact 1800. I thought I'd give the 1800s a try. Everybody else seems to be using their 13s, but I thought I would see. Um, so that's that. Next up, we are going to be putting the Q brain into position. Now, at this point, the copter is symmetrical. It doesn't matter whether you get it that way around or whatever, it is absolutely the same both ways around. Now, I intend to fit my cube brain here. I've trimmed the wires down, but as you can see, there's more than enough um, for me to trim a whole load more. And weight, especially with me using the 1800 battery, um, weight is something that we need to keep an eye on. So the cube brain is going to sit there with all the casing and everything stripped off. We have saved about 60 grams so far, um, which on something this size is significant. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two power leads that we need to put an XT60 on, if that's because that's what we're using, through the bottom there. So I'm going to put it through first, and then I'm going to pop an X XT60 on there. And also to try to protect the Q brain from vibration, bearing in mind this is the dirty plate, and to make sure that it doesn't come loose and vibrate against our top plate, 
I'm going to hot glue, I'm going to do a little seam of hot glue along here and along here just to fix that nicely in place and to stop it vibrating about. So I'm going to do those two jobs now and I'll see you in a mo. Okay guys, what's only been but a few seconds for you um, turned into a bit of a mission for me as I'd run out of uh, glue sticks for my hot glue gun. Uh, I thought I would uh, just zoom in ever so slightly and just show you how I'm going to be securing the Q brain to the DRQ frame. This is going on the dirty plate. Just going to put another bead across the top there, and that should be enough. All we're doing is just giving the uh, Q brain something to sit on comfortably to squash that down nice and firm use the bolts in the frame just to square everything up and just hold her down while the glue goes off so there we go already i can lift the uh the frame up um and that will afford the uh the q brain some vibration dampening to protect these components on the board from vibration and as I said before, it will stop it uh, touching the top plate and then transferring any vibration through. Next up, we're going to be fitting the CC3D board from Ready Made RC. I've uh, just bought some, some uh, risers from town which I've had to modify. And that's going to sit there. And I think I'm going to fit that with a dollop of hot glue on each corner. The beauty about the hot glue, if you want to change the way you're mounting it, just pull the hot glue off and you're good to go. I'm probably going to get one of the little protector cases for the CC3D, but I'm in such a rush to get this up and flying because I'm so keen to get it up there and out there. I've just bought these risers for now. So I'll get that done and then I'll come back to you. Okay guys, that's the CC3D um, all set up, or not all set up, but uh, on the board. When, you're, uh, when you do this, make sure that the board uh, is absolutely in line with the copter bang centre and as close to the centre of gravity as possible. Um, this is my first time flying a CC3D and setting one up, so um, I'm a bit of a virgin with this board. There's some good stuff out there. Um, all the links that you'll need for more information will be in the description box uh, below this video. But all I literally did was pop to a little bit of hot glue on each of the four standoffs that I've modified uh, and then sat it down. And the hot glue, again, affording the, uh, uh, the CC3D another level of vibration dampening. Um, and this is a clean plate that's got a really, really good system um, of dampening already. So uh, we should have a nice vibration free setup. Right, next up, I'm going to be wiring in these and tidying these wires up here. So that'll be the next step. I'm going to work out which of these needs to go to which terminal. The signal wire goes to the inside of the board and the minus goes to the outside of the board and they are numbered so doing this should be pretty easy okay guys as you can see on the front of the q brain there it actually tells you signal one is red signal two is orange signal three which carries the power to the board is white and signal four is brown and the cc3d is all marked up so you don't have to guess which number is which. So that step was really easy. Okay guys, starting to look like a, a mini quad now. Um, the actual setup of the CC3D uh, is going to take me ages to do. And if there wasn't a really good video out there already, I'd be quite happy to do it for you, but um, that HPI guy 
has done a fantastic video showing you how to calibrate and set up the basic start-up procedure on the CC3D. So I'm going to paste the link here. Click on that. When you watch this video, go back, click on that link or the one that's in the description box and go and have a look at Richard's video because it shows you how to do this really well. So we're going to next up get the top plate on so that we've got somewhere to mount our VTX and receiver and aerial and so on. So that's the next step. I'm going to be using the uh, the bolts provided again with a little bit of thread locker. You don't need a lot, just a tiny, tiny little dab. A uh, mistake a lot of people make when they're using thread locker is they use loads of it and then you'll never get the bolts back out again. So I'm going to do that and then work out where I'm going to put my bits and I'll see you then. Okay guys, uh, while I was deciding where I was going to put my 2.4 control link, um, I actually got carried away and fitted it off camera, but um, I'm not going to insult you guys. I'm sure you can work out where to put your stuff. And if you're not using exactly the same items as me, you may find that they fit um, <clears throat> they fit better somewhere else. So uh, here you can see the um, skew antenna for uh, which I'm using. If you haven't seen my 2.4 gigahertz DX6i modification video that massively increases the range and the signal agility of this 2.4 system um, then please click on this link because this will take you to the uh, the playlist that shows you how to do the modification and also shows you how well it works um, we've got over four miles um, on a standard dick so I just with an aerial modification like this on a transmitter that's a shot at the moment but there you go it's probably all out of focus but that's the kitty there so, right, so just click on that link uh, right so I've put my uh, orange receiver at the back and I've mounted this aerial now I wouldn't necessarily use such a long aerial but it you, you know you use what you've got I would go to actually do these aerials without this link in the middle, which would keep your copter a lot more sort of compact. Um, I should imagine when I'm threading the needle with this, this is going to get in the way. So I'm probably going to swap this out for a skew that just mounts directly um, to my little adapter. Uh, and one of the awesome things is all these lovely little cutouts and that for the Drone Frames logo. The... Uh, Right in the corner there of the Drone Frames logo, there was a perfect spot to mount the aerial. So anybody that's going to be mounting a skew um, or, or another type of aerial like this uh, with SMA or RPSMA connectors, um, you've got a nice space there that fits perfectly. So that's a, that's a good thing. Right, next up, we're going to wire up the CC3D. I'm going to take a look at which is the best way to show you how I've done it. What I may do is just wire it up and then talk you through the procedure once we're at that stage. Right, welcome to the last part of this video for the build. Um, as you can see, I have jumped ahead again, but I'm sorry guys, things have been a bit hectic here today. Um, fitting the motors. Well, you can all work out how to do that. Um, I used 6mm screws with a little washer just to stop the, hod, uh, the, uh, the heads popping through the arms. Made sure that the motor rotations were correct and soldered the wires together. I tried to save weight so I have negated using um, the 2mm uh, the bullet connectors that are recommended in, for this kind of build. Um, the wiring of the Orange RX um, will have a link in the description box below this video. Uh, the wiring for the CC3D is also up on the Open Pilot website. So I will also pop a link to that in the description box. Now there was a very neat video that showed me how to wire up 
my GoPro, uh, sorry, my uh, Mobius camera for FPV so that it plugs straight into the Immersion RC um, video transmitter. I will also post a link to that video in the description box and there'll be a, a link here that you can click on and go and see that. That's a very, very good video um, that shows you exactly what you need to do to get the Mobius working for FPV. Now if I turn the DRQ250 upside down, you can see I do have a little bit of tidying up left to do. I've not quite worked out where I'm going to put the uh, the power filter uh, for the video transmitter yet. I suspect that I will be putting it on a piece of Velcro somewhere like there. And then just poking the rest of the wires out of the way somewhere and zip tying them down so there's no vibration transfer. So uh, that will be getting done there. This is where the battery goes on, on the DRQ. I did also uh, fit the legs for the DRQ250 off of camera. If I just turn that upside down again, you can see that. There's the legs. Just one zip tie through. Very, very simple. Now, I happen to know that Alan is on his way home from work as we speak. Let's pop out where you can see that. And um, Alan's seen nothing of the build. Um, he's never flown a 250 quad before. He's never flown a CC3D before. Um, so uh, instead of doing the maiden myself, I'm actually going to take it out and I'm going to get Alan to do it. So let's go join Alan in the field now. Okay guys, uh, we're, we're down at the flying field. Um, thanks very much for staying with us, if you have all the way through the build. Al's just finished work and popped around to see how I was getting on. So I've stuck the controller in his hand, um, except for a quick buzz in the front room, just to check to make sure everything worked. And um, this is the maiden, so... Al, you've never flown a mini quad before? No, not the tiny ones, got no information. I haven't seen you flying it in the, uh, in the lounge, so I've got absolutely nothing to go on. But um, if it flies, I'll be able to fly it. So uh, let's crack on and have a go and see where we go. Go for it. On it. Really, yeah. Uh, this is completely standard setup on a CC3D from Ready Made RC. Absolutely no tuning. Completely standard out of the box setup. So just land it out and we'll stick the Mobius on. I'll record from the Mobius while we're at it. Okay, guys, just going to stick the Mobius on now. Even with my big sausage fingers, I can still access uh, the on and off buttons on the Mobius. The Mobius will be being used as a FPV camera. But there you go, you can see the Mobius uh, recording now. be interesting to see how the footage comes out. The, the Mobius is literally just uh, fitted in the Mobius carrier, a couple of zip ties, you'll have seen that if you watch the video, the build video, so there she is, I'm going to be changing the location or the length of the 2.4 control uh, link, sorry control, uh, the, the, yeah the control antenna, get rid of that SMA adapter, and uh, get a 2.4 aerial on there that doesn't have that long lead and that'll make it a lot more compact. What do you think, Al? Uh, yeah, I'm loving it so far. Um, with the standard setup, it's quite sedate. So, it, I mean, it's not trying to kill itself and even with some fairly harsh stick movements, um, it should be really ideal for somebody that hasn't flown before, actually. 
I mean, if I just put pretty much full forward in, it is lovely and controllable. Um, I probably want to play with it a little bit for me um, to really throw it around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But for, I guess for FPV, for someone that may have been getting into FPV for the first time, it's nice and stable. Oh, no, I mean, for FPV, I mean, I flew my uh, Titan with the Mobius on the other night, and uh, I think it's fair to say the smoother you fly, the better video you're going to get if you're recording it. For that, it's absolutely perfect. I mean, uh, I was probably commenting for thrashing it around because that's what I like to do. Um, but yeah, she's a lovely stable little ship. Really impressed. Looks like those motors from my RC Mart, about six pounds each, UK pounds, about nine dollars. Absolutely spot on. I mean, there, there are better motors out there, like the Sunny Skies, but the Sunny Skies are like four times the price. Yeah, exactly. Um, so mean... you could buy a set of four for this and a couple of spares, but just a little bit more than what you pay for the Sunny Skies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've got some of these motors as well, um, so it's, it's good news for me because uh, I'm going to be putting them on a little 250 project I'm working on. Which is going to be a fair bit lighter than this, isn't uh, it, I think? Yeah, I'm going for lightness on that one. I mean, I've also ordered the stuff to make it FPV, but at, the moment, at, at first it's going to be a, a fresh around toy that we'll uh, so then put all the FPV gear on later, but I'm very, very impressed for me. It as looks you, like the Mobius is... As you say, with no tuning, I mean, it's... So it's like hands off pretty much. Yep. Um, also looks like the Q brain's working really well in there as well. I've stripped down the Q brain as you guys will have seen if you've watched the build video. I stripped down the Q brain, uh, got a load of weight off it. I think we ended up saving about 65 or 70 grams off of the total weight. And uh, it certainly seems to be coping with the the high refresh rate multi-rotor setup. Yeah, I don't know a great deal about the Q-Brain, that's, that's your uh, department, but as I say, the whole thing is just very, very stable and really enjoyable to fly. I just like how easy the Q-Brain made the build, you know, no, I didn't have to create a, a power distribution center within the quad or anything, you know, it was, just a matter of cutting the wires to length and um oh, yeah. lost orientation there that was a little bit fun for a second Jobs are good and yeah. yeah yeah having the old four colored props on each corner does make it a little bit more difficult yeah, to see it's, it's pretty square and yeah um so this is the first flight with the drq250 platform as well Al. what what are you thinking about the drq250 yeah i mean the uh the whole installation is neat and tidy lots of access for the drq and I, I love the materials it's always nice to work with high quality materials as i said i'm working on a, a slightly different one that's lighter weight but the quality of the kit is um let me get rid of that because that's noisy <laughs> but uh, the quality of the kit is fantastic it was such an easy build out everything went together i mean i wasn't around for the build so um he won't have seen the video yet or or been with me it really was so so easy to build everything went together it wasn't one of those kits where you had to get your file out and fine tune stuff um drone frames have done a really really good job with this frame and it, it it's only about <laughs> 84 dollars i think um so it's you know although it's probably one of the best frames out there it's not best frame money you know no um Lisa, stop throwing things at me. <laughs> right, can I have a go, Al? Uh, yeah, so can I try and flip and roll it first? No. Okay. <laughs> Alright, then we'll bring her in. We'll save that for later. That'll be episode two. Episode crash. <laughs> right, T three words. Great little quad. That'll do for me. Your turn. Thank you.